Howdy, everyone. It's Sam. Hope you're doing well. If you're new around here, I hope I can get you to consider liking the content and subscribing to the channel. And if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. Wobble and Jaw Show is back this evening, and I wanted to get something else off my chest. Two topics of discussion, importantly. One of them uh, is the Newcastle Knights, and that's a domino effect because of the news that finally got made official today. Um, but the other piece of news, and this is just something that I only very briefly want to talk about um, because it's now starting to really just give everybody the irrits, is the current CBA situation between the NRL and the NRL uh, or RLPA. Um, and the news that dropped earlier today was that, well, the NRL came out and has responded to the allegations that dropped yesterday. And the allegations dropped yesterday was that the NRL had denied, denied the NRLW pregnancy uh, uh, financial compensation, uh, private health insurance and the like. And since that time, since yesterday, they had to hit the front foot and uh, they came out today and said, look, we want to clarify our position and say that the reports that came out yesterday were false because uh, by by our stand, well, not standards, but by our recollection, we've been talking to the RLPA and RLW about these uh, about these policies since October. Well, you've actually had since about November 2021 NRLHQ. Uh, and they've said, look, it's not going to be the three years post post uh, post birth that they were desiring. Uh, but look, the, these are the points that they've clarified. The NRL here today, providing parents with both paid and unpaid support in caring for their children of up to twenty four months, so not three but two years. Great NRL financial support of paid player parental cover per season. NRL financial support for replacement players for pregnancy replacement. Pregnant players will have contract security. Players will be able to move to a safe job. And to be honest with you, I feel, and let me know, and I'll get to you guys in a second, I feel that this is a smokescreen. It is a, uh, a can of water to try and douse out a fire that they just have let shit burn for many, many, many months now. I don't buy it from the NRL. No, I, I honestly don't buy that they've been doing that since November that or October. That's that's my that's just my opinion. I think that that whoever put out the news, I think it was maybe Real Talk Media that put it out initially, uh, that said that they had denied the NRLW uh, all these policies and whatnot. I think they, I, I think they had to come out first thing today and uh, try and put out the fire. So look, if if it is true, and yesterday was just a whole lot of nonsense and cod swabble, um, then, you know, sort of shame on the media. But then again, they have sort of poked the bear up the ass, and now the bear is climbing up that tree uh, and making sure that, you know, he, he looks good in the process doing so. Um, but if this, is, if this is the first very small step to getting this CBA done with for the of, for the ladies, uh, great because preseason should have started now for uh, for, for for the NRLW uh, because the rumours are that the NRLW season kicks off in two thousand. Uh, oh, sorry, in, Ju in in July this year. Um, I was just looking at numbers. I was about to say 2023. Uh, before I go on any further, I just want to say hello to everybody that's in the chat. CJ Moxley, hey man. We've got Cody Games PlayStation. Hello, good sir. Devils say. Hey, dude, how are you? Oi, Pruins of Vids. How you going, mate? Hey, how are you? Uh, not too far away from the footy, mate. Team list uh, have dropped today for a couple of trials. Uh, Cody Games PlayStation footy returns next week with the trials. Can't, can't wait to go to Rabbitohs versus Manly. Ah, you're going to the Central Coast? Oh, mate, I hope you do some sort of vlog or at least post your pictures up, young man. And Jason Reader, hey, man. Thank you very much for your continuous support, bro. Um. So what's your opinion, guys? Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, please, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Um, but for me, I, I don't buy that the NRL have been sort of working towards this moment because otherwise, surely the media wouldn't have put out a lie. But I, I don't buy it. I think it's more of just chucking water onto a fire that they've left sit uh, for, for way too long now. Now, the news that I really want to talk about, and this is interesting, the Newcastle Knights roster. I 
am so happy that I did not or have not released my ladder predictions because the news that dropped today might make them rise a little bit higher, in my opinion, on the ladder. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen uh, and show the news that dropped, the official news. If you haven't read, if you don't know, Lachlan, Lachlan Miller from the Cronulla Sharks, and um, I'll just pause that um, new Mazda commercial. Uh, Lockie Miller, and you see the Rugby League Outlaws there in the bottom left corner too, my, my mates. Go check them out. Um, Lachlan Miller from the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, who uh, is is nearing 30 years of age. Uh, he's been finally nabbed up. It's been officially unveiled that uh, Lachlan Miller is going to be a Newcastle Knight effective immediately. And I think this is a fantastic pickup, and it only concretes the rumours now that Kalen Ponga is going to be 5'8", which is amazing to think because I reckon three months ago, absolutely no one would have thought that. And Adam O'Brien, he's got to start weaving some magic, and he's got to start whipping things out of the old kit bag because he's under pressure. If not for Justin Holbrook at the Gold Coast Titans, I'd say Adam O'Brien maybe the most under pressure coach obviously there's anthony griffin as well so here it is uh in a move that was first reported by zero tackle last year miller will join the newcastle knights tying him to the club until at least the end of 2025 so congratulations to lachlan miller man he's now got a fair income opportunity now uh for consistency in first grade which is fantastic and from what the little i've seen admittedly it is little um he's 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 a gun He's an absolute weapon and someone that uh, will, will will should should blossom even more so very, very nicely. Uh, it is also believed, just down here, uh, it is also believed that the trade for Lachlan Miller, it's going to be Max Bradbury. If you don't know who Max Bradbury is, he is an under-19s New South Wales uh, representative and I'll just show you an image of the young man here. Gee whiz, I sound like an old bugger these days, don't I? Uh, so here he is. Max Bradbury represented New South Wales in the under-19s state of origin earlier this year. Uh, he looks absolutely ginormous. And I'll just show you a few things. He ran for 136 metres in under-19 state of origin. That's a nice a nice, uh, a fair old whack. Post-contact meters was 55. He made one tackle break, played 46 minutes, and he made 18 tackles down here, but did miss the four. But overall, uh, I think that is a tremendous, uh, I think that is a tremendous debut for uh, the under-19 state of origin. And it could be, it could be a great pickup for Cronulla. Um, I think Newcastle have won this one so far, but the the fear that I got is if, and I touch wood, I touch wood, what if Lockie Miller pulls a hammy? And I, again, I touch wood, and that's an awful thing to say. I don't wish it, but let's just, let's just say he does a hammy in round number 10. Who's coming through? They're still Bailey Hodgson, and they're back to square one again, where they've got only Bailey Hodgson there to fill in at fullback. Um, and if things are really bad and a touch wood, it's not. Caitlin Ponga might have to be shifted back to fullback because, I mean, they're due some luck now. The Newcastle Knights injury run has been absolutely horrific for about three seasons now. Uh, in particularly 2021, I'd reckon, but 22 was even worse. So, so they're still the the depth is the, the stake is not thick. In my opinion, the, the the steak needs a fair bit more depth and a fair bit more meat. Um, and I'll just go into their roster and talk about um, what their potential. And this isn't a one to seventeen video, but what their potential one to seventeen could be. Um, so here we are. There's the Newcastle Knights team list there, and here's Bailey Hodgson, Bradman Best. So what do we got? We've got at the moment Lachlan Miller will be the fullback. And our wingers, we've got Dominic Young and Greg Mazu, I'd say. Heimel Hunt could push for a wing spot or center position, but at the moment, you'd say Greg Mazu and Dominic Young are the wingers. 
the center pairing, Dane Gagai, and I'm glad Dane Gagai is going to remain in the centers because there was even a whisper that he was going to be at fullback, uh, deputized at fullback, which just would have been bloody tragic. So Dane Gagai keeps his spot in the center position. Bradman Best will be the other. Unfortunately, the young man, Anari Tuala, who did play for uh, the North Queensland Cowboys for a time, looks like he could be squeezed out. If not, he could uh, he, he could uh, overtake Greg Masu. So there's there's not too bad uh, not too bad a depth now in the back line. Um, but again, if Lockie Miller goes down, it shifts things so much. And my point to all of this is you've got Kalen Ponga and Jackson Hastings now as well as a new halves combination. My point to all of this, man, is that if one person goes down, a, in particularly someone like a Ponga or a Miller, it's going to have huge ramifications. And right now, they are teetering the tightrope uh, for 2023, in my opinion. Uh, but with this signing, the... The spine looks like Miller, Kalen Ponga, Jackson Hastings, and the captain, Newcastle captain, Jaden Braley. And Jaden Braley has been nipped, has been bitten by the curse, the injury curse for the past couple of seasons uh, or for, or for the past year or so. And Braley's due some luck, man, and he can be a very, very good player. Um, and if you give this team, if you give this team a year, and in 2024, they're still thereabouts. They're still very much rock solid. That's a spine that with weapons on the edge, like, say, this young man like uh, Matt Croker, who looks like, uh, who, who who has done some really nice things in his early times uh, as, a, as a Newcastle Knight. You've got Adam Elliott and Jack Hetherington. Brody Jones, we, we, he became a cult figure overnight in a game against Cronulla. Um, and and veteran like Lachlan Fitzgibbon and Tyson Frizzell, there is a case to be made that on paper, Newcastle Knights, bro, can really stick it to people in about six months' time if things are going really well. If not, in 2024, I'd say watch out for him just bloody quietly. Um, so I, um, I, I really like the signing of Lachlan Miller, but it's just all teetering on a knife's edge, bro. Uh, for for the Newcastle Knights, um, so I, I just wanted to come on here and just give my initial reaction to uh, the signing of Lachlan Miller. I think it's a great pickup for Newcastle. Fantastic! It's what it's exactly what they needed. Um, and for the Cronulla Sharks to get the young man Max Bradbury, I mean, I, I believe Wade Graham. I uh, don't mean to put words in people's mouths, but I believe Wade Graham uh, has indicated that this year will be his last season, uh, and so there opens up another door uh, on the interchange bench. And for a young bloke like Bradbury, you'd expect to see him, hopefully for his sake, just the once in 2023. Um, I'll just go into the uh, comments once again. Um, this is getting out of hand. I assume you're talking about the uh, CBA. And hey, National Sports Loaded. Hey, dude, how are you going? And guys, if you have any questions uh, just before I uh, just before I go, please shoot them on in and I'll try and answer them to the best of my capabilities. But um, I think for the past few years, this this Newcastle Knights side has had a roster on paper that looks like could challenge top six, not a premiership, but can feature predominantly in September football. And with this acquisition of Lachlan Miller, and I think people are sleeping on the signings of Adam Elliott and Jack Hetherington and a fully fit Jaden Braley, I don't know, man. You look at the Cowboys of 2022 and say, where did they come from? The Knights had an absolute disastrous season, not uh, like due, due mainly to injuries. And there was just, they looked buggered. They looked, they looked lost for answers. And Kalen Ponger and Kurt Mann's situation went down as well midway through. Um, but if Newcastle Knights can just keep the off field bollocks, to a minimum, because they were bad uh, last year, the Newcastle Knights, when it comes to off-field drama. If they can keep it to a minimum and laser focus on themselves, on, on the team and on the town that very much do now deserve uh, a, a ray of sunshine. Yes, they've made finals the past couple of years, but 
man, they they really deserve to see their team make a preliminary final, bro. The Newcastle Knights fans are fantastic. I think on paper, the Newcastle Knights, bro, if this team can stick together for the next 18 months or so, I think there's going to be... I think that I think there's going to be a massive change in in culture. There's going to be a massive change in momentum, and this signing could very well save Adam O'Brien. But the Newcastle Knights season, to begin with, off the top of the dome, it's tricky. It's a tricky start to the season for the Knights. So, if the Knights after ten rounds are five and five, you got to persist with Adam O'Brien just because there's so much change. But if the Knights are sitting at three wins and seven losses, I think that axe is one loss away and then Adam O'Brien will have to go, unfortunately. That's that's my opinion. I don't mean any disrespect. I just want to come on here and start talking footy. Um, National Sports Loaded, um, do you reckon Ponger and Hastings will be a great halves pairing and maybe sort out uh, or sorted out on the leadership issue. Well, Jaden Braley is the Newcastle Knights captain and Kalen Ponga is the face. But Jackson Hastings, bro, is going to bring so much desired leadership into that half, halves role. Um, my question on Kalen Ponga is, I haven't really seen him kick a footy. I, I, like, off the top of the head, I can't recall the last time he put boot to ball. If he's in side an attacking 20 meter zone and he puts in a deft grubber kick uh, have i seen that before i don't think so has he put in a crossfield kick i can't but he's not a noted kicker i think he's punted it due to desperation stakes um maybe once or twice in the past but i don't know man i just i've been seeing kalen pong his kicking game and the other issue and, and the on the on the on the opposite opposite side of the coin to that is he's known for his famous cutout passes, his double cutout passes. If he's going up against a, a well uh, a well trained team, defensively trained team like the Penrith Panthers, surely there's going to kind of come, going to come a time where they're really going to, they're, they're going to be so aware of it. It's going to become, it's going to become predictable. Um, so Pong is timing um, is going to be everything, and Ponga is going to be everything for this club. He's, he has been for many years now, but um, and he's still a young fella, but the time is nigh now, mate, and he does deserve luck in the injury department, Kalen Ponga, um, and so does this club. This club has had awful luck for the past few seasons, um, and it's been two years in a row where people have said, Kalen Ponga needs to rise up. He needs to be the man to, to lead him. And um, look, in 2020 and 2021, he was thereabouts. He was thereabouts. And you can't help concussions um, in the in the game. But um, Kalen Ponga, what an absolute story and what an absolutely fascinating story and, 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 and series of events this is going to be uh, for everybody to, to watch him uh, develop and I think Jackson Hastings is a fantastic person to be foiled with. I think Lachlan Miller, while he still is brand new to first grade in rugby league, he brings his own experience. And in saying that, he can start teaching Bailey Hodgson something that he knows. He can start helping him in that department. But it's great that Lachlan Miller is going to be a first grader, a fair income first grader. Uh, for the next couple of seasons, because just the glimpse we got from him uh, over the past year or so, it's been tremendous. It's been tremendous. Uh, Jason Reader, yo, Warrior, uh, National Sports Loaded, yo, dude. Um, Warriors in our fanatics, I'm not sold on Ponga being in the halves. He's a fullback, in your opinion. Not sure about the kicking game. I'm not sure about the kicking game either, but I think he is talented enough to make it work this year and then watch out for him in 2024 um, with a full year under his belt of being uh, being Newcastle's 5'8". Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's just all I wanted to say, guys. Um, thank you very much uh, for, for tuning in and asking some questions. Um, if you want to shoot one through just before I go, please do so. But um, yeah, I, I think the Newcastle Knights, man, on paper, they could actually push the top eight push for the top eight this year. Um, but they looked good on paper last season and they just, they kept tripping over their own shoelaces. So if they can remain laser focused, the Newcastle Knights, bro, they could be a Cowboys of 2022, surprise everybody 
and actually pinch a top eight berth because a lot of people um, had them uh, for a top eight berth in 2000. In 22, or uh, I've seen, or at least I saw a good handful of people think that Newcastle Knights on paper had a good team to make it to the top eight. Thank you very much for your continuous support, gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Adios.